Hey everyone, this is my five inch toothpick. I put toothpick in giant air quotes because this has nothing to do with the toothpick. Uh, this is a full on five inch quad. The only thing that's toothpick about it is these skinny arms and an all-in-one flight control ESC board. Uh, these are 2204 motors. Uh, this thing's gonna be pretty fun. Uh, I'll probably break it, but it'll be fun until then. I showed you the x Knight uh, four inch frame from Beta FPV in my last video. Uh, this is actually a five inch version of the same thing. I haven't built the four inch yet, but I'm ready to maiden this one. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit more at the end of the video, but first we gotta get in the air and see what it can do. Well, the experiment's gonna have to continue on another day. It was flying really rough with the default beta flight tune. All right, I'm back at the house and I just wanna show you what happened during that maiden flight. Uh, when I took off, the power to weight ratio was awesome, uh, but it was flying really badly. I was getting kind of weird jitters. It didn't feel very locked in. I was getting a lot of prop wash. And at first I thought that was just the beta flight tune. It makes sense that this would need a different tune than the default because this quad is so different than anything else. Um, but the problem was actually getting worse. And so I brought it in and when I did, I discovered that one of the screws was completely missing and the arms were all kind of wiggling around and actually all of the screws were loose. And that was surprising to me. The screws look like this, they're M2 flathead screws and I had tightened these down as much as I possibly could. The problem is you can only get them so tight because the heads have these shallow, uh, really small hex openings. You need a 1.3 millimeter driver for those screws and so I used this little tool that came with them. The problem is if you tighten it down too much then you end up just stripping the head and so there's a limit to how tight you can get it. It's funny because I expected these screws to be a problem but for a different reason. This is the four inch version of the frame that I showed in my last video. I thought the problem was going to be having these strip out in a crash and that might still happen. They're flush mount which means they sink down into the carbon and this is 1.5 millimeter carbon on the top and bottom. Um, but it means that there's actually less than a millimeter of carbon holding each of these screws. So that might still be a problem, but the more immediate problem was having them just come loose. But I'm not giving up yet. My solution was to replace all eight of these screws with different M2 screws. These are actually prop screws. They're M2 by seven, but they seem to be about the right length. And this can use a much more standard 1.5 millimeter opening on the two millimeter screw. And so I can use this to get it a lot tighter. And I'm using some thread locker this time. Hopefully that'll keep them in and keep the arms from coming loose. All right, day two, time to give this thing another go. I got the arms tightened up and I'm ready to fly. It is raining a little bit out here. It rains a lot in the Pacific Northwest. You can't let that get you down. So I'm gonna fly anyway. So I'm gonna get out there and give it another go, see if we can get this thing flying a little bit better. But I'm starting to wonder if it's ever really gonna fly great. And the reason I say that is because these motors are really big for this frame. Um, and there's just not a lot of rigidity. I don't know if you can see, but if I twist the motors this way, there's actually quite a bit of play. And that's just because this arm is so skinny. I suspect I'm gonna like this four inch version better, uh, but I won't know until I try it. Another thing I'd love to try is putting these 1505 motors with the new HQ 5x3 prop on a five inch frame. Unfortunately, I can't put these motors on the Beta FPV frame because it only has 16 millimeter mounting holes, which means this frame can only be used with these really big motors. 
If you're wondering about the rest of the build, these are Hyperlite 2204 motors from Pyrodrone. Uh, they're 2255 kV, so I'm running this on 4S. This is the Azure Power 5040 prop. Uh, 40 is a lower pitch than I usually fly on 5 inch, but I might go even lower. I've got some 3.1 pitch props from HQ that I might try on here, and the point of having a light prop is so that I don't need a massive battery. It's day three, and I'm at it again, and it's raining again. Um, but I've got the HQ uh, 5.1 by 3.1 by 3 props on here, so an even lower pitch. I'm hoping that'll lower the current requirements. Yesterday, uh, when I was punching out, I was getting as much as 75 amps of draw, which is more than I want on here because I want to be able to use a small battery, like maybe an 850 4S. If I have to go up to a larger battery, then I feel like the weight of this is just too much like a regular 5-inch, and it kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, so that's the hope with these props. Now, the arms, I was successful in securing them with those screws and the Loctite. After flying yesterday, the arms were still nice and snug. I was not getting any wiggle on the screws. So if you build anything with this x Knight frame, either the 5-inch version or the 4-inch version, I suggest you change those screws like I showed and use a little bit of thread locker. Uh, that was necessary for me just to keep the thing intact in the air. There's still some weird oscillations and it doesn't feel completely locked in all the time. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fix that with the tune or not. It's going to take more time uh, to kind of iterate on this and try it out. With these low pitch props and the lightweight, it makes it kind of mellow. It feels a little bit more like flying a micro than flying a five inch drone because uh, you don't have that weight to throw around. Um, but, you know, it's pretty nice. Is it better than my 3-inch or 4-inch drones? No, uh, but it's an interesting experiment. I'll continue working on this. I wonder what you guys think. Have any of you actually built a 5-inch toothpick type thing? Uh, and what did you choose to put on yours and how did that work out? Uh, let's talk down in the comments below. For myself, I feel like this build is kind of in a weird place. Uh, for it to really have the authority and power that 5-inch deserves, uh, it needs to have a stiffer frame and bigger batteries, and then it's just going to be like any other 5-inch. And uh, that could be great. 5-inch can be great, but that's a well-explored space. Uh, so I don't think there'd be anything really special about it in that case. So I'm kind of interested in going the other way. Even smaller motors, even lighter props. If I put those 1505s on a frame this size with the two-blade HQ props, it'd be about 35 grams less all-up weight, uh, and it'd be able to fly longer with a smaller battery. On the 850 milliamp hour forest battery, I did just get like three minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, that's not bad, but an even lighter build would do even better. And I wasn't really pushing it that hard. When I did push it, I was getting 50 amps of load and there's no way the battery can hold that up for very long. Well, this has been a fun thing to experiment with, but I would not actually recommend this build for you at this time. Um, I'll keep tinkering with it. If I come out with something really good, I'll let you know. I've also got a whole bunch of other projects, uh, so I might move on to those soon, but uh, there you go. What do you think? Let's talk down in the comments below. Happy flying.